like to be here today celebrating this event? Uh, personally, it's a fabulous event, but truthfully, I'm not here to celebrate a locomotive or a railroad or a golden spike. I'm really here to focus and to celebrate the stories of the people, the stories of the men, and even beyond that, the stories of the descendants. Because uh, without the descendants, you know, we would have lost so much. And I think it's important to realize that these stories of the descendants and the things they accomplished are applicable to all different groups. Russell Lowe, a descendant of a Chinese railroad worker, traveled to the middle of nowhere, Utah, for a unique celebration among thousands of railroad enthusiasts. It's the 150th anniversary of the Golden Spike. His grandfather's story, alongside that of many immigrant workers, has only recently been put back into the spotlight. You know, it's a story that I've researched for decades. Yeah. This is my first time here, and to be here... This is your first time here? First time at Promontory, wow. absolutely. And to be in the same location. Well, right next to this guy. Right next to this guy. <laughs> that my great-grandfather was 150 years ago. Wow. That, that's amazing. It's just feeling, feeling the history. Yeah. We went on a grade tour yesterday, or the day before, and a little quieter than this, but we right. saw the structures that they built. We saw this rock culvert, culvert, which was designed to filter the water or divert the water, and it was the same stones that they had placed in 1868. They hadn't moved them because they were still working, and these things are gigantic. So, so you are a descendant of, you, you were saying your great-grandfather? Yes, my great-grandfather was named Hung Lai Wo, and he came to America with his brother. His brother Jiku in the early 1860s, and they were coming to work on the Transcontinental Railroad. That's why they came. That's exactly why they came. They, wow. they came. You know, the, the, the truth is, they didn't know it was the Transcontinental Railroad. Yeah. It was a job. They, they offered them a job and money and a, and a way out of the country, and they took it. They wow. took it. And do you think for them that was a good move? Like, did they they leave? Uh, you know, a bad situation, or you know, it, it's interesting because I I think there was a lot of poverty. All these Chinese who came to America, not just for this railroad, but really the whole diaspora was from this tiny area of southern China. They call it the four counties of the Sayup area. And it's just, you know, less than a tenth of a percent of the, of the area, but they all came from this area. Oh, really? And because of the poverty, because of the jobs that they were offered. Yeah. Uh, this, you know, the real question is why did these young Chinese men and boys come here? And I, I think there was something in them that, that made them quite unique, quite different. Uh, yeah. They were the sons of farmers, peasant farmers, but this area was also right near the sea, kind of the maritime area, and these young men had been leaving southern China from that area of China for a thousand years, and sailing off and exploring all, yeah. over, all over the world. So they were kind of adventurers, quite yeah. frankly, and it was kind of in their blood. So this railroad was just sort of the next, next adventure right. for them, I think. Wow, an opportunity for adventure in America. Oh, I think so. I mean, yeah. and it, it, it changed their life. Yeah. It changed mine. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here because of them. Right. And it changed America. It really did. It changed the face of this nation in many ways we can talk about. It's apparent to see that we are able to honor and to celebrate the work of a lot of these immigrants. But do you think in your father's time, even your grandfather's time, they were celebrated in the same way they are today? You know, it's hard to know, in 1869, when yeah. my great-grandfather was here, I wasn't here, and there aren't a lot of records, and everybody is um, quite pained, the Chinese are, about that iconic photograph of the joining of the two right. locomotives, because it's obvious that there are no Chinese in that at all. But the truth is, that photograph was staged, yeah. and it was done hours, much later, from the final joining. And in the books, and, and in my belief, is that at that moment, the Chinese were actually being honored in, in Strobridge's private rail car. He had the two Hong brothers come in, and they were honored. And they basically stood up and they cheered what these Chinese did and what they represented in terms of, of, of their accomplishments, building the western half of the Transcontinental Railroad. So I do believe, I want to believe that they were honored. Yeah. And I think if you look at what happened in, at the 50th anniversary, they were under there too, because what they did at that point was they got three of, of the surviving Chinese men who 50 years before had laid the final rail, and they had these now old men come up, and they were honored. They had them, I believe, reenact that. But what happened subsequently after that is something we should realize, and that is over the next 150 years, not only the names of these Transcontinental Railroad workers were forgotten, but many of their deeds were forgotten too. Yeah. 
And I think these were incredibly bold young men who changed the face of our nation. They built something that really united our country permanently. You know, they, they united it not just physically, but economically, socially, and psychologically. We were one nation for the very first time, and it was because of what they did. Yeah, it's, it's interesting to think about it in that way, for the first time. Oh, yeah. And we talk about travel across the country. It was literally months before to get from one end to the other. And after they built this, it was a matter of a few days. Yeah. So it, it changed the whole concept of, of what America was. What do you think made your great-grandfather decide to do this? Well, that's interesting. You know, what, what is the spirit that makes somebody come to America? Yeah. And, and it doesn't matter whether you're talking about a Chinese man getting into a boat or, yeah. or, or an immigrant from any country. I, I think they come for the jobs and the opportunity. Hmm. I think that's what brings all of us here, a chance for a new yeah. life. But I think there's something very specific and distinct about the people yeah. who get on the boat. And it doesn't matter what, what country you're talking about. And I think what makes you and, and me the same is the spirit of, of our forebearers who right. came to this country. Yeah. There's distinctly something different about the people who, who left and the people who stayed right. behind. And Those America, living... America's better because we're the descendants of the ones who had that courage. A spirit of adventure and opportunity oh, and determination. Absolutely, absolutely. and I, I think that uh, it's something for us to remember today. We, we celebrate locomotives and we celebrate golden spikes and we celebrate railroads, but this story is not about the things, because those things are gone, the railroad's gone. It disappeared, you know, yeah. decades ago. But it's the people, it's the men and the stories behind the men who did this, which is really something we should celebrate. This video is inspired by our PBS series, Reconnecting Roots. Visit ReconnectingRoots.com to watch the full episodes or to check out our music and podcast. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe so we can keep making more. Thanks for watching.